All right, so for the past two lessons, 4.4 and 4.5, we talked about factoring, right? Um, we talked about factoring uh, problems that maybe looked like this. So uh, let me just give you an example. Maybe there was one that looked like 4K squared plus... Oh my. All right, so sorry about that. But um, 4K squared plus, I could say like 6K... And this problem would be a GCF problem because what would happen is you would take out what they have in common. So right here, what they would have in common is a 2 and a K, and your result would be 2K plus 3. Now, I'm not taking a long time doing this. This is just an example of what it looks like when it's just a GCF problem, a greatest common factor. It's not a difference of two squares or anything like that. It just, they have something in common, so we take it out, okay? We've done other problems with two terms that maybe look something like this. And this is what we call a difference of two squares because we could rewrite it x squared minus 4 squared, which results in x minus 4, x plus 4. Again, I'm not taking my time going over these because we've already done these, right? But this is a difference of two squares. Okay, so GCF difference of two squares okay um, then we did other problems where um, okay, this is going to be kind of tough to just think one up but maybe uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 that should work and that factored into x plus 1 times x plus 1 which you could actually write as x plus 1 squared right now I'm going to show you the x method that goes under it because you were supposed to Multiply your A times C, which is 1, and your B term goes on the bottom. That's a 2. And then you would think of two numbers that multiply to 1 that added up to 2, which would have been a positive 1 and a positive 1. I would not have to divide by anything because my A term was a 1. So that would result in that solution. This is called the X method. Okay. So notice GCF can have two or three terms or more, it doesn't matter, but you're looking for things they have in common. The uh, difference of two squares, um, that one has a specific pattern. It's two terms that are subtracted and you can write both terms as something squared. Uh, if you can do that, then you can rewrite them as a difference of two squares. And then X method requires the X method, right? And then there's one more, which there's no way I can make one up to make it work. So I'm just going to I'm just going to write the general formula. I can't, I can't think one up off the top of my head here because these are a little bit more complicated. But these um, normally require grouping, right? You're going to group. So this is factoring by grouping, okay? If you want to see how this works, look at section 4.5 in the notes and in the videos, okay? I don't know if there's any of these problems on your homework. I'll check right now. Give me a second. Nope. So you're not going to have to worry about those for this assignment. Okay. So that's what we've done. Okay. We've done four different types of, of factoring. The top three are what you have to know how to do for this homework. The last one uh, you should know how to do for your quiz, but not for this homework. Okay. So... All right, let's go with uh, what you're going to have to be able to do, all right? Once you factor, they're going to want you to solve. Like, the way you know that you have to solve is because they set it equal to zero. So we're going to do some examples uh, from your homework here. So this says solve each equation by factoring. Okay, so solve each equation by factoring. And um, the way you know you have to solve, like I said, you're going to notice that they're going to set these equations uh, equal to zero for the most part. Okay, so here's the first one. Again, these are all homework problems for you guys. So n minus 1 equal to zero. So they want us to solve. 
Now we're going to go back in time a little bit and remember something you guys learned in the very beginning of Algebra 1. In the very beginning of Algebra 1, you guys learned something called the zero product property. This was a long time ago. And the zero product property makes perfect sense. It says, if you have two things that are multiplying each other and they equal to zero. So if this is true, okay? If this is true, then what is A or B? A or B has to be zero, or maybe they're both zero, right? But one of them has to be zero, or both of them have to be zero. So if this is true, then A equals zero, or B equals zero. Now in math, the word or means both as well. So A or B or both, okay? It's called an inclusive or, not exclusive or. So if you have a multiplication of two things and they equal to zero, then you can set each one of those two things equal to zero. So you see right here, I have n plus four times n minus one equals zero. I'm gonna write n plus four equals zero n minus 1 equals 0. Now, are those going to be hard to solve? Those little equations? No, they should be pretty easy, right? Let's subtract 4 for this one. And we get n equals to negative 4. For the other one, we'll add 1. And we get n equals to 1. So my answers are negative 4 and 1. And I'm done. See, once you've factored your problem, the rest is easy. This is what happens after you've factored it. Okay? All you got to do is get each little factored piece, set it equal to zero. Now, this is a very common type of problem where you have two binomials multiplied uh, equal to zero. Sometimes you don't have binomials. You get um, something that looks like this. So it might be like a V times V minus 6 equals 0. Now this is still the same thing. This is two things that are being multiplied and they're equal to 0. Okay? That means that I can get each individual piece and set it equal to 0. Well, the first one's pretty easy. V equals 0. I mean, well, there you go. There's not much I can do with that, right? But the other one I can get uh, solved for by adding 6, and I get V equals to 6. So my answers are 0 and 6. Now we'll do one more of these, and then uh, we'll move on. Because this part... I mean, I think you can agree with me. This part seems to be pretty easy, right? Like, once it's set equal to zero and you factored already, I mean, just set each piece equal to zero and you're good. Now, if you happen to have a problem um, that looks like this. Whoops. 4x plus 1, 5x plus 3. It's still the same thing, but you might need to take more steps than just one. Um, it's not going to really make it that much more difficult, but uh, it does take a little bit longer to solve. It's still the same situation. I got two things multiplied. They're equal to zero. Um, so I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero. So 4x plus 1 equals zero. 5x plus 3 equals zero. All right. Set each one, uh, or solve each one. So let's start with the left side. We'll subtract by 1. So I get 4x equals negative 1. And then just divide, right, to get x by itself. So we're going to divide by 4. So x is equal to negative 1 fourth. So that's one answer. But notice it took a little bit longer to solve. Not a big deal. Okay. And then we'll uh, do the same with the other side. Let's subtract 3 on both sides. So I get 5x equal to negative 3. And then we'll divide both sides by 5. 
So x is equal to negative 3 fifths. So my answers are negative 3 fifths, negative 1 fourth. That's the whole front page right there. Okay, the whole front side of your homework is that. Okay, just solving each little piece individually. These types of problems are what you learn in the very beginning of Algebra 1, right? Two-step problems, that's what we call them. Okay, the factoring part is what you kind of learn in the Algebra 1 near the end and Algebra 2 right now. Okay, so that's what we have to get to right now. But... Um, in the most case, once you factor, then the problem becomes easy to solve, okay? But the factoring is always a tough part to get to. Now, just a real quick FYI, so just uh, something for you guys to, to know. There's going to be a problem that's going to look something similar to this. Okay? How do you get rid of a square? What, what do you think? How do you get rid of a square power? It kind of has the same word in it. Square root, okay? So in order to get rid of a square, you're going to have to square root both sides, okay? So that's going to result in x minus 2 equals 0. And then you solve, okay? There's going to be a problem similar to this. This is not the problem that you guys have. Okay, but it's going to be very similar to that. It's going to start with something squared, take a square root, and then you solve like normal. Okay? So your answer for this would eventually be a 2. Okay? But um, notice there's only one solution for this one because of the way it turned out. But um, it's okay. You can have one or two solutions for the most case. Are we okay with how to solve once it's factored? Because the, the front of it is once it's factored. So all this stuff is already factored equal zero, right? Factored equal to zero. Here's another one, factored equal to zero. So are we okay with that? All right, so, I mean, essentially, I could now stop and just say do your homework, okay? But I want to do a couple of them with you guys just to kind of get, get you guys going. Um, most of this stuff that we're about to do requires what we did on Thursday and Friday, okay, factoring, all right? So we're going to do the same thing, solve by factoring. The only difference is none of these are going to be uh, pre-factored for you, okay? You're going to have to do them. So let's start off. Um, trying to check to see if there's anything here that looks. Well, let's start off with this one. 5k squared plus 3k equals to 0. Start off with that. Now, if it's only two terms, then you only have two options. It's either a difference of two squares. Is that a difference of two squares? Can, there's an easy way to tell if that, that that's not a difference of two squares. How can I tell? It's a plus, right? A difference would have a minus, right? That's what difference means, subtract. So obviously that's not a difference of two squares. So whenever you have two terms, you have either a difference of two squares or a GCF. So that means that uh, that's possibly a GCF. What can I factor out from 5K squared plus 3K? Just a K. So let's take a K out. That's going to leave me with 5K plus 3 equal to 0. And now we're back to the problems in the front, right? We have two terms equal to 0. So I'm supposed to set each term equal to 0. Well, the first one is already done, k equals 0, so there's not much I can do, but I can solve for the second one. So let's subtract 3. That gives me 5k equal to negative 3. 
And then I'm going to divide by 5. So k is negative 3 fifths. So my answers, I got two of them. A negative 3 fifths and a 0. So this is a GCF problem, okay? A GCF problem. Now let's take a look at a, um, at a difference of two squares problem. I'm going to put part B right here. Remember, these are homework problems, okay? So whenever you see two terms, you ask yourself, is this a GCF problem or a difference of two squares problem? Uh, I see a minus in the middle, so my brain immediately goes to difference of two squares. I just got to be able to show that both of those are squares. So something squared minus something squared equals to zero. Well, what squared is V squared? V. What squared is 36? 6. So remember, once you write that down, you will automatically put out two parentheses like that, and there's a pattern, right? You put your Vs first, your 6s at the end, minus plus, and you're done. You just factored it. Okay? You don't need to do X method or anything like that for this. You could if you wanted to, but I, I would not recommend it. It's easier just to do the difference of two squares. Now, we got to solve both. So V minus 6 equals 0. V plus 6 equals 0. So let's go ahead for the first one and add 6. And that gives me V equals to 6. And then for the other one, we'll subtract 6. And that's V equals negative 6. So my two answers are negative 6 and positive 6. I mean, would you agree with me that if factoring isn't an issue, if, if you don't have too much of a hard time with factoring, would you agree that this isn't that hard of an assignment? Once, once you get it factored, it's pretty easy, right? But the hard part is like the factoring, right? Like how good are you at it? Right? Have you practiced it? Have you done the homework already? I know some of you guys just barely got it. Um, but, uh, you know, like can, you, can you do that? Because if you can do the factoring, then you should be okay. Right? No problem. And we're not even doing the, the weird one, the grouping one. Right? So let me give you uh, one more of these things here. And that way I can get you guys uh, working. And this one's going to look a little different. Let me write it out really quick. Because normally, they're supposed to say that it's equal to zero immediately, but this one is not. And that's okay. But this one is not equal to zero immediately. If it's equal to zero, then great. I can just factor right away. But if it's not equal to zero, then I need to get it equal to zero. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract both sides by... 7. So that's going to give me an r squared minus 5r minus 24 equals to 0. So that's, that's my goal, to get these things set equal to 0. Once I do that, now I can factor. Now notice, this is three terms, so there's no way that this is a difference of two squares. But I do still have to ask myself, is there a greatest common factor? Is there a number that I can factor from uh, 1, 5, and 24? Is there anything they have in common? 1, 5, and 24, other than a 1? No, there's nothing, right? Do they all have the letter R? No. So then there is no greatest common factor for this problem. So that means I am going to have to use the X method. So here we go. Now remember, the X method has an A, a B, and a C to it, okay? The top of the, the X, you're going to multiply A times C. That's negative 24, okay? And on the bottom, you're going to put your B value. That's a negative 5. 
Now I gotta think of two numbers that multiply to negative 24 that add up to a negative five. What two numbers? Say again. A six and four multiply to 24, but there's no way I can get five from them. If I subtract them, six and four is two. If I add them, it's 10. Eight and three sounds better, right? Um, which one is positive? Which one is negative? All right, negative eight, positive three. That looks good because multiplying those gives me a negative 24 and adding those gives me a negative five. So that's a good choice. Do I have to divide by my A term? Negative eight and three. Do I leave them like that or do I divide by my A term? Remember, I'm supposed to divide if A is not one, right? A is one, so I don't have to divide. So that means I'm done. Let me write my factor here. Whoops. So I'm going to put two parentheses here. Why is it not changing to blue? There we go. So two factors equal to zero. R is in the front. Minus eight plus three. And now we're at the quote-unquote easy part, right? Not just solve those two little pieces. So R minus 8 is equal to 0. R plus 3 is equal to 0. So if we add 8 on both sides, we get R equal to 8. On the other side, if I subtract 3 on both sides, I get R equals negative 3. So I have two answers. Negative 3 and 8. Okay, so this is what your homework is going to be like. It's going to be um, basically trying to find um, trying to find the solutions to a quadratic functions, but you may have to factor first. Not in the front page, that'll be quick, but the back page for sure, okay?